Okay, so I'll try to keep this video short, but it is actually one of my f the most fun things about searching to talk about. It's very nerdy though. Um, on a lot of records, you'll see, just like I was saying with the mesh terms in um, PubMed, you'll see the subject terms, and they really have the same function as hashtags. So you know if you see a social media post and you click on a hashtag, you'll launch a search for other posts with the same hashtag. Subject terms are exactly the same concept. Um, in this Instagram post, the person had to add a bunch of different hashtags because she didn't know which tag people were going to be searching for. So a shelfie, which is a picture of your bookshelf, a lot of people just search shelves or bookshelf instead of shelfie, so she had to add a ton. But in the second example, which is um, from the and you know from the Stanley Cup playoffs, the Washington Capitals won, and the organization said, "Hey, everybody use this official hashtag, all caps." And what a mesh term is, or what a subject term is in a library database, is just an official hashtag. So you only have to use the same one every time in order to find all the records. And so. In PubMed, this is a search that we I ran in PubMed, and when I looked at the search details, this is from the old interface, but it's a little easier to read. When you look at the search details, every single term, when you start to read how they were translated into a PubMed search, it begins with that word and then mesh terms, because these words are all recognized official hashtags, as it were. And they are searched not only as the word, the keyword, but also as that special tag. And that's some very cool stuff because medical subject headings are all part of a hierarchical thesaurus of medical terminology. They're used, as I said, by human indexers to tag or standardize medical language in PubMed. And they're trained to do this. So articles about heart attacks are always tagged with the mesh term myocardial infarction, always the same terminology. Articles about eye strain are always tagged with the mesh term asthenopia. So you don't have to worry about that keyword problem. You just use the term and you're going to get everything, assuming it's been tagged properly. And here's an example of mesh terms. This is at the bottom of a PubMed record. If you just scroll to the bottom of a PubMed record, you can see a mesh term. That not all PubMed records have them, um, but when they are there, they are very cool. You can take, you can click on one, and you'll see three options. And what um, what we're going to do is click search in mesh, because I want to show you what the thesaurus looks like behind the scenes. Um, but if you did click search in PubMed. What that would do is launch a search for other records that have the same tag added to them. But here is what the mesh thesaurus looks like, and here's what's so important to understand. I have looked up airway management and the mesh term thesaurus, and you can see indented under airway management are more specific terms, such as airway extubation, intubation, in intratracheal, respiration, comma, artificial, and even those have subject terms that are even more specific indented under them. What you have to understand is if I searched airway management as a mesh term, I am automatically launching a search on all those more specific terms. So not only am I going to find records that are tagged with airway management, I'm also going to find records that are tagged with airway extubation. And that's what's different about searching a term as a mesh term versus searching a term as an ordinary keyword where it's just you look for that term, nothing else, no special stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, when you put words into PubMed, PubMed automatically maps them to their proper mesh terms. So it's doing a lot of work for you behind the scenes, which is what makes PubMed such a cool database. It's automatically broadening your search and bringing in additional relevant keywords. But sometimes this goes wrong. So if you searched on nursing, you would get breastfeeding results, the classic example. Here's another mapping example that's just interesting. Um, I put risk you know, and breast cancer and oral contraceptives in BRCA1, and almost all of them translated into a mesh term. 
And um, even risk, even something as broad as risk, is used as a tag in the PubMed database. So if you want to see this in action, go to a PubMed search, put in some keywords, just pop open the little carrot next to the search in the search history to see that details, and you can see what MeSH terms were applied. It's pretty cool. Other databases also have these subject headings, but they don't apply them automatically like PubMed does. They're just there for you to use as a filter in those menus on the left side of the page that allow you to filter your results down. And so here's for an example, as we saw in CINAHL, on the left side, if you pop open that subject heading, that subject major heading, you can hit those checkboxes and narrow your search from there. And most library databases offer this functionality. If we had been doing this search in CINAHL, we might have chosen to narrow by airway management cardiopulmonary resuscitation, just some good uh, keywords that appeared. And this also is a good hint for things that you can add to your keyword brainstorming list.